Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about SFU Computer Science. So if you're interested in applying to this program, this is the right video for you. But disclaimer, sorry if I sound like I'm a little bit sick. My nose is just a little bit congested because I am sick. But without further ado, I'm super excited to go ahead with this video and tell you everything you know about to apply to SFU Computer Science. As you know how these videos work, if you haven't watched one before, we normally go through four different topics, starting with academic, admission, student life, and then funding. So starting off with academic right away, let's talk about career opportunities. Starting off with career opportunity, SFU Computer Science has over 350 active employers looking to recruit students all the time. Some of these companies include big companies like Mobify, EA, HSBC, Sony, Microsoft, BlackBerry, and TELUS. These are some very big brand names and definitely adding these to your resume can give you a big boost or if not, end up working at these companies themselves after you graduate. So SFU does work on a co-op term, so you do study and then co-op, and you obviously have to also apply to these co-op positions by yourself as well. A statistic that SFU uh, gave us is that over 85% of co-op students find employment within three months of the graduation through the network they built with, with their co-op employers throughout the school year. So this is a great uh, statistic because it shows that the majority of SFU alumni from their computer science program end up getting jobs with some of the big companies like Microsoft and TELUS we, we talked about earlier. Now let's talk a little bit about exchange. They're kind of like three really big topics for exchange. One, there's international co-op. So if you find a company that's overseas, you can take a co-op term to work over there. Second, there's a research co-op semester abroad at the University of uh, Darmstadt. Sorry if I butchered that name. It's a university that's partnered with SFU in Germany. And the last one is SFU slash Zhejiang University, and it's a dual degree program in computer science where you can study computer science in China and get a dual degree. And this is really good if you're working for international firms, especially in Asia. So just to show that you have some background knowledge in like another language or working in a different culture as well. For, so for courses for SFU computer science, there are generally a lot of courses that you can take, but there are some minimum requirements that you need to take. I'll leave the link in bio and I'll put up an image right now just of the courses that you need to take. And there's just a lot of courses, so I don't need, have to go through all of these individually, but basically you can pitch and choose which one you like the most, which one you find easiest, which one you find the most interesting. So you can really kind of tailor your degree to something that you like learning about as well. Let's jump into the admission category, starting with requirements. So SFU looks at both grade 11 courses and grade 12 courses. And starting with grade 11 courses, they look at your English 11 and they look at a language 11. This is something that's super important and you need to consider if you are in high school is that they look at a language course. So this can be your French or this can be your other languages that they take in like Mandarin or Spanish. But this is super important because some high school students, they don't necessarily consider about taking a language course and they skip out on that in their senior years because it's not necessarily a high school graduation requirement, but it is an SFU application requirement. So make sure you get a language 11 at least. So for me, I took Mandarin 11. And then they look at your math 11 and they look at a science 11 and they look at a social uh, studies 11. For grade 12, it's a little bit more flexible and they leave room for a few electives, but they look at your English 12, they look at your science 12 and they look at your math 12. They do say it's recommended that you take Calculus 12. So if you don't have Calculus or you weren't able to fit Calculus in your schedule in high school, don't worry, you can still apply. But it is recommended to take Calculus because one, it shows that you have academics rigor and Calculus is super important for computer science. And it's necessarily as if you probably thinks that if you take Calculus, you're more likely to do well in computer science. The last thing I wanna talk about courses is List A and List B courses. So these are approved academic courses that are approved from your school or from your district or from your curriculum that SFU counts towards your admission average. So it took a minimum of five approved grade 12 courses. So this is including the uh, minimum requirements that we talked about earlier, including your English, including your math and including your science. But if you have another few, like three electives, for example, that they take like economics or accounting or something along the list A, and B, you can make sure you put those in, especially if they're good marks, because they can definitely boost your admission average. I'm going to leave the link down below for the courses that are approved, and therefore you can take a look and see if you're taking any of them or have taken any of them already, and see if you can apply with those courses as well. Moving on to weighing, SFU doesn't have a supplemental application for their computer science program, 
So therefore, you, they only solely look at grades. So this is super important that you try to get as high as an average because you don't have a supplemental application to write about yourself and demonstrate uh, your personality to make up for perhaps a lower GPA. But with that said, the admission average is around mid to high 80s. So definitely, if you want a really strong chance to get into SFU Computer Science, I would recommend a 90 plus average. Now that we're done with student life, let's talk a little bit about residents. So they have residences uh, and towers and townhouses. So basically towers are kind of like the traditional residences that you kind of know where you have common washrooms and shared uh, apartments or suites or single rooms or double rooms. And then townhouses are a little bit further away from campus and they're generally more kind of townhouse style, suite style where you have your own kitchen and your living room. And these are mostly for upper years, but sometimes first years can apply for them and get them as well. The residence that I would recommend would be the East and West Towers. And these are the most expensive, but they're also the newest residences and they're very beautiful. They're $3,800 per term. And then the cheapest residence that SFU provides is $3,300 per term. Now let's talk a little bit about meal plans. So the one thing really good about SFU meal plan is that it's unlimited, it's 24 seven, and it's all you can eat. So that's super good if you're a big foodie like me, you can just go head out late night if you're studying, go get some food, come back to your dorm. And this is unlimited access and it's from $2,645 per term. So this is for your winter term or for your spring term. So in terms of social life, SFU is a commute school. So a lot of students live outside of the SFU area and drive or commute to school and then go commute or drive home. So generally not too many students stay in the campus or in the residence which generally makes SFU more as a slower and more quiet school. But with that said, I do think it's a good thing, especially if you have a quieter personality and you just want a lot of time to study. But the one thing is they do have a lot of fun common areas and they have a bunch of games uh, allocated outside. So right in front of their library, they have ping pong tables, they have full tall tables, they even have bonfire pits, sometimes they have marshmallows there. So you can definitely just go there, have fun, hang out with friends, and it's a great place to meet new people. But with that said, there is an events calendar and I'll leave the link down in the description below. This has all the events that SFU has and there's something that it's interested in, whether it's career-wise, hobby-wise, or something that you just want to check out, make sure you go to those. Sometimes they have the science fair, which is super cool. I went to one as a kid and they definitely have uh, a lot of super cool experiments uh, that you can check out. They have demonstration projects and they even have liquid nitrogen ice cream that they made and I absolutely loved it as a kid. And the last thing I want to say is very specific to computer science. So SFU has a large supercomputer that's located in their Burning Mountain, uh, Burnaby campus. And it's one of the largest supercomputers in the world, which is crazy to think. But definitely, if there are some computer science events or you want to tour that supercomputer, super definitely check the, that out because it's something that you only see once in a lifetime. The other thing I like to add is that they also have a huge telescope. This telescope can see Mars, it can see uh, like other planets such as like Saturn or even Jupiter and, and as far as that. So on a clear day, they sometimes host open houses for their telescope. So you can definitely check that out as well if you're interested in space. So for SFU clubs, all their clubs are under uh, SF. So for clubs, all the clubs for SFU are run under SFSS which is basically like a student union uh, that hosts all the clubs. So make sure you just check out the club list that I'm gonna put under. There's so many clubs, so I can't go through all of them, but generally, I think that you're able to find something you're interested in and you can join as well. Okay, lastly, we're gonna talk about the last topic, which is funding, which is sometimes my favorite to talk about because there's a bunch of scholarships you can apply to and it can basically fund your entire education for free. So starting with tuition cost, it is $6,500 per year if you're a domestic student and $32,000 a year if you are an international student. Now talking about scholarships, for entrance scholarships, this is really huge for SFU because they're generally way more generous than other universities when it comes to entrance scholarships. So starting with the requirements, you need a 90% course average, need two references, you need to demonstrate academic and extracurricular uh, involvement and the deadline for this year is December 15th and I generally think it's December 15th for all years and the prize money or the scholarship money is huge for domestic students the minimum is $27,000 to $50,000 and then for international it can go up to $130,000 so with any of these this is basically a full ride tuition 
and if not, a little bit extra to cover for books and supplies and other resources. Alright, lastly, on to financial aid. So SFU does have bursaries, and the criteria is that you have to demonstrate financial need, and this is assessed by SFU when you have applied. You have to be enrolled at at least a minimum of nine units. So these are basically nine units uh, of standard grade courses in the term of an application. And you have to be in good academic standing. So a minimum of a CGPA of two at SFU in the term of the application. So this is this this last part is waived in your first term at SFU, but the other two criteria does apply. All right, that basically wraps up the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in applying to SFU Computer Science, I definitely recommend it. It's a great co-op school and it definitely has one of the best reputations out there just because they even have like a supercomputer that's one of the biggest in the world. Um, but with that said, make sure you like, subscribe, share with a friend who also wants to apply to SFU as well. And also with that said, make sure you check out our three minute quiz down below, both for academics and also for scholarships as well to see if you're able to be uh, uh, eligible for any scholarships or eligible to enter our admission program as well. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys see you next time.